What is going on guys? My name is Kenji and welcome back to my channel. Hope it's not the first time you're watching one of my videos, but just in case it is, I'm a final year medical student and a biomedical science graduate studying King's College London. And as I'm sure many of you guys know, over my entire time at university, through my last degree in biomedical science and also in medical school, I've actually engaged in a number of research projects all across the world, including in Greece and also in Taiwan. And I've also managed to get a number of research articles published in my name as well. So in this video, I'll be talking to you guys all about research in medical school. Firstly, why is actually really important to do. Secondly, how to actually get involved in research. And finally, and most importantly, how to get it all funded so that you can actually travel the world while doing research as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Starting off with the first point, which is why does research in medical school actually matter? So the first point of why research actually matters in medical school is that it's a really fun way to get involved in improving patient care and also another nice way to travel whilst also doing that. To tell you guys a bit about the experiences that I've had uh, when I was actually involved in research in my first year medical school I was actually able to take a short weekend kind of a vacation slash work a visit uh, in Greece in Athens and the reason why I actually was able to do this is because my research was actually accepted at a conference in Athens and I actually had to fly over all the way to Athens to actually present my research so it's really really cool I had such an amazing experience and I actually have a full video of my trip there which I'll link up here somewhere but essentially I went to Athens I presented at the conference and I also spent half my time actually traveling around Athens and visiting all the historical sites. Similarly to that, in my second year of medical school, I also managed to get a research project all the way in Taiwan in Southeast Asia. So I actually moved to Taiwan for an entire month during summer. Uh, I went to the labs every single day, did a bit of research, helped to improve patient care. And as well as that, also traveled all across Taiwan. And when I actually finished off my time doing research in Taiwan, I then went and traveled the rest of Southeast Asia, including Bali, Tokyo, the Philippines. And I had an amazing experience. And again, a video about that the whole entire time will be linked up here somewhere. So that's the first reason to get involved in research, to help improve in patient care, and also to travel the world while you're also doing that. Now, obviously not all research allows you to travel, but if you do really get involved in research and you do find a really nice lab, and you do put in the efforts to try and get your research uh, involved in conferences, and also try to find different areas of funding for your research, it definitely is possible. But let's move on to the next reason as to why research is important. So the next reason I was gonna talk about, about why research is important, is that it actually improves your ability to to get a job at your preferred location in the United Kingdom, but I actually did a bit of research on my laptop. I found out that from next year onwards, the actual publications that you might be able to get in medical school don't count towards your job application anymore. So that's something to take into consideration. Previously in my year, when I actually applied for my jobs um, as a junior doctor, one of the actual things that added to my application and gave me more points that helped me secure the job in the location that I wanted to in the UK was actually having a research publication. But as I mentioned, that is research change and that is no longer a thing anymore so that's something to bear in mind now although getting involved in research and also publishing your papers is no longer something that adds to your job application as a junior doctor it definitely is something that it still adds to your application when you go on to apply for your specialties so when you actually finish your years as a junior doctor and you go on to apply for dermatology cardiology whatever it actually might be you still do get extra points for any sort of publications that you make in research throughout medical school so this is only one of the actual criteria but there's loads of different types of research things that you can do in medical school that will still contribute to your application as a specialty doctor. So one of the things, like I mentioned, is actually publishing uh, data in research articles. So if I do any research in my labs and actually get it published online, that is one really good criteria to meet. The second is also going to conferences. So like I told you guys, I actually presented my work, my research at a conference in Athens. And that also adds to your specialty application. And finally, also getting funding for all of this research as well contributes to your job application as a specialty doctor. So although it doesn't count to your job application as a junior doctor, it still will count towards your application as a specialty doctor. So getting involved in research early in medical school can definitely help you later down the line. And the final reason why I think it's really important to get involved in research in medical school is that it's kind of really fun to be more than just a medical student. Like, don't get me wrong, being a medical student is absolutely amazing and it's so fun to go to the wards every single day and see patients and to finally be a medical student. But as well as that, if you can also be a medical student who can also go to the labs on the weekends or you know when you're not in medical school and do some really good research and learn how to be an actual scientist even more than just a medical student that is a really really cool thing and whenever I actually walk into the labs and I do research and I tell my friends and my family that you know I am a medical student but I'm also a scientist that is something that I really enjoy and it's definitely an added bonus of being in medical school so that is a quick summary of all the reasons that I think it's really important to get involved in research now let's move on to talk about how you can actually get a research position while in medical 
medical school. So getting involved in research in medical school is actually a lot easier than you might think. The first way that I'd actually recommend to get involved in research and the easiest way by far is to go through people that you already know in medical school. So when you join medical school, you'll be uh, assigned a personal tutor, you'll be assigned an educational supervisor, you'll also be assigned a clinical supervisor, and you're also going to meet a bunch of lecturers and professors while you're in medical school. Now, because these people already know you and because they already have a good relationship with you, they're a lot more likely to say yes if you actually go to them and ask if you can join their research lab and help them with any research that they have going on. Now, obviously, before you actually approach them, you want to do a bit of research on them on Google to try and find out whether or not they actually do research. But if they are involved in research, I definitely recommend going through these people first. If they actually say no and say, you know, sorry, there's no space in my lab or sorry, I can't have any students, then what I would do is to actually ask them if they have any recommendations or anyone that they know that you can then go to to actually get a research placement. And that's actually how I got my first ever research placement while I was in biomedical science. All I did is I asked my personal tutor if I can join the lab and they said no, unfortunately they have no space, but they did refer me on to someone who did have space in their lab and I actually joined their lab instead and all my research went really, really well. If that doesn't actually work, you can literally approach any sort of doctor that you meet on your research placements. So the second way that I actually found a research placement whilst being university is one day I was uh, on the wards and I was assigned to a random doctor uh, in urology. I was actually with that doctor for a few hours that day. We developed a bit of a rapport, a bit of a nice relationship. Uh, and then I actually approached him after towards the end of the ward and just asked him if he had any research opportunities available. Uh, thankfully, he actually gave me his card and said, yes, I have plenty of research opportunities. Just feel free to drop me an email and we can discuss them. And then literally within a couple of days, within a couple of weeks, I was actually part of his lab doing research that actually changed my life and ended up allowing me to actually go to Athens. So that is a second way, super, super easy. Try and approach any sort of doctor that you meet on your day-to-day -day life on the wards in medical school and hopefully that will work. Now, the next way that I actually recommend you guys to get research placements is by emailing doctors across the country and maybe also internationally as well. This is actually how I managed to get my research placements over in Taiwan. Through my lab, I actually heard of a doctor who was working in Taiwan and I found out that he has a lab situated in Tainan in Taiwan. So what I did is that I got his email address through a colleague of mine and then I sent an email basically asking if they had any research opportunities that I can get involved in on my summer break. And obviously they don't pay me, they won't pay me any money at all. But all I wanted is a yes, a thumbs up to say that you can come and do some research in my lab. We'll give you a little project and that's completely fine. And then once he said yes, and he said he's happy to have me in Taiwan, then I actually moved on to try find a place to live in Taiwan. So emailing a few people that he knew in Taiwan and finally also getting some funding and getting some money to actually help me pay for this trip to Taiwan. So it may not necessarily be in Taiwan, it may be in the UK, but you can literally email any sort of doctor who's situated in the hospitals that you work in. So for example, at King's College London, we have hospitals uh, including Guy's Hospital, St. Thomas's Hospital, uh, King's College Hospital. There are a bunch of hospitals, meaning there's a bunch of doctors that I can actually email randomly, explaining my situation, explaining that I'm a medical student at King's College London, and just basically telling them that I would love to have a research opportunity in their lab if they have any space. That's the third way. And the final way to actually get a research position is through your university officially. Now, whilst you're at university, as I mentioned, there are a bunch of researchers and a bunch of lecturers who actually need students who will help them with their research projects. Now, whilst I've been in medical school, I received a bunch of emails on a monthly basis about research opportunities across the entire university. So while you're actually at medical school, definitely try and be proactive, check your emails all the time and see if there's any emails about research opportunities. Maybe go onto your university websites and see if they've actually um, publicized um, any sort of research opportunity. So whilst you're university, definitely keep your eye out for any sort of research opportunity that is available to you. And also what you can do is you can maybe email your head of year and tell them that you're really interested in research and see if they have anyone, again, that they can kind of point you towards or any sort of projects that they have available at your university. Now, before going on to the next part, which is to tell you guys how to actually get all of this funded, I want to take a quick break to thank Skillshare who are also kindly sponsoring the video. Now, if you guys haven't heard of Skillshare on my channel before, they're essentially an online learning platform and community for learning new skills. They have tons of online courses on there from baking to how to study for exams to video editing to literally any sort of skill that you can think of Skillshare has a class on there for you. I actually love Skillshare so much that I've actually made my own classes on there and I've actually made two classes on Skillshare. The first class I have on Skillshare is all about how to write a first class essay. So if you're in school or university and you want to find out how to actually write the best essay possible then I have an entire class on there that takes you through the entire essay writing process to get you guys a first class in your essays. The second class I have on Skillshare is all about how to actually get into medical school 
So if you want to apply to medical school and you want to find out how to actually get from applying to medical school to being a doctor, I have an entire class on there to take you guys through the whole application process. One class that I keep constantly coming back to is by MKBHD and it's called YouTube Success Film, Shoot and Edit. And I highly recommend you guys watch it. The reason why I like it is that it takes you through the entire process of becoming a YouTuber, how to film your videos, how to actually script your videos. And I constantly keep coming back to it because it helps me improve my YouTube game. If you guys want to check out Skillshare for yourself, then the first 1,000 people who click on the link down below will get an entire month completely free from Skillshare. And I highly recommend that you guys at least sign off the trial, watch my classes for free, watch MKBHD's classes as well. And if you guys decide that you actually like it, then you can sign up for the full entire membership. That's Skillshare. Let's go ahead and get back to the video. So in the last part of the video, I'd actually like to talk to you guys about how to get your research funded and hopefully get enough money to travel the world like I did. Now, this is a bit of a tricky area and you may not necessarily be able to get all of your research funded, but if you do it right and you work hard, then you can definitely get the majority of your research funded. Now, what I mean by being funded is that when I actually did research in medical school and also my last degree, I was getting around about 200 to 250 pounds every single week to help me actually pay for my bills whilst I'm getting involved in research. And back then in my early years of university, 250 pounds per week was a huge amount of money and really made a difference in my life and allowed me to actually travel the world through that. Now, the first way that I actually recommend you guys get funding for your research is to try and go directly through the lab itself. Now, when I actually joined the lab that I told you guys about in urology, what I did is I got the conference offer and I got invited to actually go present my research in Athens. And what I did is I asked my supervisor if there's any opportunity to actually help me pay for my flights, my accommodation and things like that as well. And thankfully, he actually told me that the hospital that we're at, which back then was Guy's Hospital, actually had uh, money available for anyone who wants to go and fly and present at conferences. So I can't tell you guys exactly how much I got, but I got the entire trip paid for. I got my flights paid for, I got my hotel paid for, and also a bit of money for food and stuff like that as well. So through the grants that I received through my hospital and through my lab directly, that actually paid for everything. So the first way to get it funded is obviously to get a research project, then ask your supervisor if there's any funding available for any sort of research opportunities, either for any international opportunities like going to different conferences or even just while you're in the lab in the UK. That's the first way. The next way to actually get your research funded is through the university itself. Now, the university really wants to provide opportunities for their medical students to get involved in research. This looks really good on the university, but also looks really good on the medical students as well. So because of that, the university often offers different summer studentships, which basically means um, funding throughout the entire summer for any medical students that wants to get involved in research. And this is one of the other ways that I actually got some money from my university to help fund my research across summer. The downside to this is that it's not actually as much money. I think I was getting maybe 100 to 150 pounds per week for my research. But again, while I had no job in summer and while I was spending all of my time in the labs, that really made a difference to pay for my living costs. So once you actually secure your place at a lab, make sure that you check your university website. Also check your emails as well for any sort of research grants, any sort of summer studentships that'll be available for you to take. And the last way that I recommend you guys get funding for your research is through external bodies. Now, this is one of my favorite ways of getting research because they often give you a bunch of money. So I think I was getting around 250 pounds a week. And also it tends to be a lot more prestigious to have the sort of, you know, external name uh, on your CV. So to tell you guys a bit more about that, I actually got funding from my research from two places uh, throughout my time. The first place was through um, the British Association of Dermatology. And the second was through the Wellcome Trust. Now, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but those are two very prestigious uh, organizations. So to actually be able to say that I received funding from these uh, organizations is really, really good and will really help you stand out on your CV. The reason being, which is also a bit of a disadvantage as well, is that they're often a lot more competitive to actually get, again, because they give you more money, because they're very prestigious, and also because a huge number of students will actually be applying for these uh, grants. But as long as you have a very good project that you can back yourself on, as long as you have good grades throughout your time in university, you often can get these scholarships pretty easily. So when I apply for these scholarships, of course, I had to write an entire application. I also had to get a cover letter and I also had to give a lot of information about what my project will actually be on and then get some support from my supervisors to help me support my actual application. But once you actually get that done, then hopefully you will get the money and also the name associated with the actual organization. So like I said, the two that I got was the BAD and also the Wellcome Trust, but there are a bunch of different external organizations that have a huge amount of money just for medical students and also just for any sort of university student uh, whether you're in medicine or not. And that is pretty much all the information that I have on research and funding and things like that. I really hope it's provided some value to you guys. If it has done, please make
please make sure to leave a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed as well with notifications on to never miss an upload. And before you guys leave, here are a bunch of videos on my channel to do with research and to do with my time traveling abroad and stuff like that as well. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.